Welcome, welcome to the worship service of the Fellowship of San Diguito, where we hold up what is of highest value of wonder and beauty and goodness and love. It's nice to start with Katie Cleric's music. We're working on getting the sound better and bringing more of her talent uh, into our worship services to share and inspire, share with and inspire us all. My name is Reverend Thomas Perchlick, and today we know that the nation, that the world is rising both with fear and anger, both with hope and love, both with an awareness of the brutalities of the moment and the possibilities of the future, all in struggle and tension with one another. All of this comes with us into worship. It's what it means to seek the beauty, beautiful and wholeness to seek wellness in the midst of life and illness and death. If you have your own chalice at home, please get that ready to light. And uh, I like putting my Zoom window on, on uh, gallery view sometimes just so I can see all the faces, but often the best experience is just using speaker view. view. You can play with that, find out what is best, change it every so often just to see what's going on. And so now with that basic prelude, let us join in worship, a community of all ages, join in singing along with uh, the video of our gathering hymn, Come sing a song with me. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Candace Sage, and I, along with Chris Burns, will be serving as your worship associate this morning. If you are visiting today, we are so glad you are here and hope you will enjoy your time with us this morning. The Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Diguito is a community drawn together by seven Unitarian Universalist principles. They are things we covenant together to affirm and live into being in our lives and in the world. At this challenging time, we come together to reaffirm our commitment to each other as one world and one community, 
recognizing that at any time we have both sickness and health, we see beauty as well as sorrow, and we are in this life together no matter what. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We're an active congregation and there are many ways to keep informed. Our newsletter, our website, and the weekly order of service announcements. If you are a visitor, we encourage you to sign up for our weekly online newsletter by sending an email to office at uufsd.org and give, giving our administrator, Tracy, your contact information. Although we are not physically together, our pastoral care team is still here for you. After our Sunday service, this week's pastoral listener, Carrie Trailer, will be available from 11 to 12 to offer confidential listening and support. You can obtain Carrie's contact information from the online fellowship directory and let her know if you wish to have a phone or Zoom contact. Please see the order of service or the weekly newsletter regarding how to access our directory if you have not used it before. Today I have one special announcement. Inspired by our Unitarian Universalist principles, our vision is that we will promote, locally and globally, love, spiritual growth, service, right relations, and sustainable living. To meet this vision, we have organized several task forces. In the midst of a nationwide uprising calling for change in our approach to race in this country, the Racial Justice Task Force will be leading us in honest and open conversation about our responses to this moment. These conversations will follow the virtual coffee hour today. To get there, just stay online after the service or log back in at 11.20. Chalice lighting is a Unitarian Universalist ritual that represents our shared history and hope. Its flame symbolizes our commitment to the values and faith that bind us together. Today's chalice lighting words are by Nancy Reed McKee. Our community knows no boundaries. We are not confined by the physical limits of walls, or for that matter, of what often binds us, restricts us, holds us back. We are freer than we know when we release ourselves and each other from expectations of what is needed for true community. We are here, together in space. I see you. I hear you. I love you. And I light this chalice, a beacon of this community, holding us all together here, now. I invite everyone to join in lighting a chalice or a candle, and if you wish, turn on your video, holding up your chalice so, to the camera so that we can share our lights together. Please open your heart, calm your mind, and join in singing our centering hymn, Spirit of Life, followed by reciting our covenant. The words to both will appear on your screen.
May love be the spirit of this congregation. May the quest for truth be its sacrament and service be its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to help one another in fellowship. This is our covenant. Reverend Thomas, you're muted. <laughs> Each week, <clears throat> we remind ourselves that we are more than a congregation of ideas or ideals, but also a community of people leading our individual lives, experiencing individual joys and sorrows. And in this, we pledge together our care and support. I noticed that we mentioned Carrie uh, Trailer earlier, her phone number has been added into the chat. So if anyone wants to go look up her number, you can just look it in, up in the chat. We can always send an email to pastoralcare at UUFSD. But here you can go ahead and chat, type into the chat. You can type anything that you wanna share. If there's something that you appreciate, something that nurtures your spirit, it brings you joy. You can type that in uh, to just share with everybody or you can uh, speak of sorrows, write something a difficulty or a tragedy that you're struggling with at this time. I personally wanted to tell all of you that I have just signed a contract with another congregation which starts in August. So uh, very formally and officially, I'm marking the ending the last couple months uh, that I have serving you. And uh, I truly, it's, it, it is still a joy to be a part of this congregation. Uh, and I wanna connect with you as much as possible. I'm gonna have office hours and other ways of connecting. I just wanted you to know that. Uh, I appreciated all the cards, letters, uh, uh, emails that I've been getting over the past few weeks. I also wanted to hold up uh, both a concern and a joy of Robin Sales. Robin Sales has a daughter, Siobhan, who lives in Minneapolis, just off Lake Street, which has been a focal point of protest and some violence. She, but what uh, Robin really wanted to hold up was how proud she is of her daughter because in the midst of that, Siobhan raised, raised over $3,500 to provide supplies to house and shelter protesters who are gathering on the street. Each week, if you have a joy or a sorrow that you'd like me to share in this time in the service, please send it to me. Otherwise, read the chat and remember that there are always, always many joys and sorrows that have gone unspoken, but they're still present, shaping our togetherness, weaving connections between us all. For all joys and sorrows, to all the joys and sorrows, let us seek comfort, let us offer comfort, let us be present with comfort and embody that by singing the song, Comfort Me. Each Sunday, we collect an offering to help sustain the work of our fellowship. I give my time as a volunteer and my treasure with my monetary donations to support UUFSD. Because this loving community is such a meaningful part of my life. There are at least four ways to give as shown on the screen. You can text a dollar amount. You can use PayPal. You can choose Give on the on uh, on an online on the uufsd.org. 
you can pay a ch you can send a check and pay by mail or as i do you can have your bank automatically deposit your pledge each month when we are able to meet in person members of our congregation bring food and other goods each week to be distributed to the Community Resource Center in Encinitas. If you are in need of food, the CRC is here for you. If you are fortunate enough to be able to help, please take food offerings directly to the CRC and leave them on the table in the alley behind the Second Street Food Bank or make a financial donation through their website. Thank you all for your generosity. If any of you have been reading the news, you've been hearing stories of death and fear and anger. This flute for me always reminds me of the story. I take the, the Lakota story of the flute coming to humanity in order to communicate love. I will play this flute and then we will go into silent meditation, take a deep breath and sit together in peace and hope and love. Getting rid of the weird window. People who are part of the baby boom generation may know that long ago there was a singer named John Lennon. He and his wife Yoko Ono came out with an album titled Walls and Bridges. John said, walls keep you in, either protectively or otherwise and bridges get you somewhere else. Today, we will speak of transitions in life as being like crossing a bridge, bridges to be crossed. But more importantly, we speak of what you need 
to be safe, how to build a good bridge, a solid bridge that gets you across times of danger and what you need to cross the bridge safely. And whenever I think of crossing bridges safely, I personally remember Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I remember the moment where Arthur, King Arthur and all of his knights come to the bridge, the bridge of death. And finally, Lancelot goes forward, the brave certain uh, Lancelot. And he comes up to the keeper and he says, he walks up to the keeper and the keeper, before he can even say anything, says, stop. The keeper has ragged clothes. The keeper has a glassy eye. The keeper is leaning forward and says, who would cross the bridge of death? must answer me these questions three, ere the other side he see. And then Lancelot, of course, says, ask me your questions, keeper, I'm not afraid. And the keeper says, what is your name? And Lancelot says, Sir Lancelot of Camelot. He said, and what is your quest? And Lancelot says, to find the Holy Grail. And what is your favorite color? Blue. Right then, says the keeper. Right, off you go. Well, not brave, Sir Robin sees this and he goes, oh, that's easy. And he comes running up and he comes up and the, of course the keeper says, you must answer the, uh, who approaches the bridge of death must answer me these questions three ere the other side I see. And of course, Robin says, ask me the questions bridge keeper, I'm not afraid. And he says, what's your name? Sir Robin of Camelot, what is your quest? To seek the Holy Grail. And what is the capital of Assyria? <laughs> I don't know that. And of course he screams as he's being thrown into the, the cavern, uh, the canyon of death, the chasm of doom. The bridge that we hold up today is the one that our youth cross over to adulthood. And of course, most people cross that bridge automatically without any danger necessarily. But we are crossing many bridges and there are bridges. And even that bridge can be fraught with difficulties and fears and disasters and problems. And now America, the global community of all human beings, all are crossing over chasms of danger and death and we are wondering, will we cross safely? Life changes have always been marked by human cultures around the world with rites of passage. And perhaps in a sense, all of the global protests are some sort of rite of passage. In the culture of India, especially with the Brahmin, they tend to speak of four stages of life. Early on, one is a, a goes through a, is a brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is a student, and then one becomes a grihashta, which is a householder. Then one becomes the vanaprastha, which is a retired person, and then one can become the sannyasa, which is a, a renunciate or a hermit. Some ancient European thinkers divided life not into four sections, but into seven sec sec ages, the mewling infant, the whining child, the passionate youth, the striving adult, the aged adult, and then the ancient elder. In UU circles, we really only talk primarily about five stages in our programs. First, there's the nursery, and then there's the children's program, and then there's the youth program, and then there's the young adult programs, and then there's adult programs. I have seen some UUs who have marked the shift from uh, middle-aged adult into elder with something like an elder ceremony or a saging or a transition to being a crone, something like that. But usually we just hold it to the five. But it's always good to notice transitions in one's life to mark them with your religious community, to celebrate that. And that's what we're doing today with our youth. Now, when I was in London, I visited London a while back and around the subways, uh, we often heard the phrase, mind the gap, which is warning us not to twist our ankle between the platform and the train. But in UU life, the phrase mind the gap 
was raised to make us pay attention to the space between why are you you, our youth group, our youth programming, and adult participation in the congregation. And the fact is that most people, when they begin the patterns of going to college or holding a regular job, they just stop participating in the life of the congregation. There's a gap in their UU life and some never return out of that gap. Come up, they go off to other things, always remembering their life in YRUU, but never connecting again. The word and the very word and the idea of doing bridging and bridging ceremony um, was born in order to build bridges between one stage and another to call youth to continue to consider themselves members of congregations, participants in congregations. And so in ritual and words and music, we're summing a bridge for those who are crossing out of youth group and into the next stage of their UU journey, their religious life. This worship service is not only a marker, it's really the beginning of a bridge. And if you're gonna build a bridge across a chasm, there must be something on both sides of the gap. You have to have in, in what bridge terminology is called an anchor, anchorage, something on the other side. I can remember being at a national assembly, general assembly of Unitarian Universalists years ago. And there was a young woman who had a chance to give a speech to the, to the assembly. And she was a lifelong UU. She had been born as a Unitarian Universalist. But she really ex uh, noticed when she left youth group how hard it was to remain in the congregation. She said, for example, she could not have been at that general assembly if adults had not invited her, if adults had not paid for her way there, if adults had not given her something to do and ways to connect. She noted how when she was a youth, when she was a teenager, there were weekly groups, seasonal camps, conferences, monthly events, annual ceremonies, always encouraging her, connecting her back into the community. And that had just vanished when she became a young adult. There wasn't even a bridge to be thrown off of. There was just no bridge at all. We need community to help us connect to remind us that we are not on this journey alone because the journey of life is hard. And when we are young adults, we are being tested in all sorts of ways. We don't e do not even know the ways in which we might fail or succeed. We're being pressured and tested and to have a community is of immense power. Adult groups, uh, uh, young adult groups, uh, adult event, young adult events uh, like those which uh, Allison has provided in this fellowship are of great power, sustaining power to individuals. And they always, t I've heard, you know, heard many young adults talk about that. I've helped create young adult groups. My guess is with the fellowship that, especially because Allison is so alone in doing work for young adults, that if she was not here doing that, there would be nothing in this fellowship, no bridge for young adults to get into adult life within the congregation. As we're trying to establish our place in the world, we need community and we need to be a part of a larger community, not just of young adults. The now famous Mexican artist, Frida Kahlo, was wounded in a bus accident when she was just starting that bridge when she was 18 years old. The moment she was crossing the bridge into adulthood, she was wounded deeply and she lived for the next 30 years, a life that was full of suffering and desire and vitality. And she described her suffering in her art. She wrote, La pasión es el puente que tomas el dolor para cambiar. Passion is the bridge that you take from suffering to change. And passion is the experience of liberation from suffering to freedom to new possibilities to a different self. Passion, like the passion, like the English word passion, is originally a word that just invoked pain and severe discomfort. But because of its association with the Christian religion and Jesus, who suffered out of love, uh, out of for desire for the sake, the well-being of all human beings, it became associated with any strong emotion that dominates our will. Pasión es el puente. Passion is the bridge. But you do not have to cross that bridge alone. For Frida, 
her community included, for Freda, her, her community included her lover, Diego Rivera, her friends, other lovers that she had, friends who loved her art. I wondered if she'd had better health care and the vast community of fans of her work that exists today, if she would have thrived better, gone longer. Still, she crossed the bridge of passion and saw the change in her heart as she grew into a full adult grappling with the difficulties of life. Rising up, creating art and beauty out of both the pain and the joy. And a community of meaning and love and health keeps passion from being despair and ruin and it helps it be a bridge to change, transformation, liberation, an anchorage on both sides. We are all crossing some sort of bridge together. I remember back in 2018, 2018, I was very involved, so, you know, years before that, I've been very involved in the struggle to, of people who are trying to create multicultural, multicultural organizations of change and justice, especially around issues of race and ethnicity, inclusion and justice. I worked with many people. We were aware even then, not only of police brutality against people of color, constant and endemic, but we also noted the economic brutality, the social suffering that so many go through on a daily, weekly basis. And then I was part of those groups of people who helped elect Barack Obama in 2000, 2008. And suddenly I was shocked to realize how many of my allies, how many of my partners in racial justice thought they had gotten to the end of the bridge. They really thought, we've elected a black president. It's done, we're almost there. Just, they could just see the end of the bridge. Of course, there was a backlash. People who didn't wanna cross that bridge, people who didn't understand the bridge, people who didn't want to be on the other side. And then there were those who, who uh, and of course there were many people who were completely blind to the realities. Now there are some who think that because they have elected the current president, they don't have to go across the bridge of racial justice. They don't have to go to the world of love and inclusion and fairness and understanding. They think they can all, we all can go back to wherever we came from, they say. But in fact, we are already on that bridge. We are crossing that bridge. And we must decide how to hold each other together, to strengthen each other, to cross that bridge, to answer the questions that are being demanded of us. I know there's some people who want to push other people off the bridge. I know there are people who are thinking about blowing up the bridge. We need to hold together and create the community that creates the strength of passion to call us forward to the other anchorage. And of course, at the same time, all of humanity is crossing this bridge of COVID-19 to a new world. Radical changes are being caused by this disease and our responses to it. If the disease has revealed in stark, obvious contrast, social disparities, radical injustices, the weaknesses of our healthcare system, the weaknesses and shortcomings of our government. On a personal level, this time has cost many of us to wonder, what does it mean to be human? I've talked to people who are letting go of things that seemed so vital before the time of sequester and COVID. Things are just letting go. It didn't seem so important anymore. Wondering what really and finding things that seem much more important now. There are other people who are clinging to things, conditions, and people who at once seemed sort of peripheral and now seem so essentially vital. We're crossing the bridge, being asked questions, we must come up with answers. And if we have a community of faith, a community of explorers to share those struggles with, we will go better than the single individual trying to answer questions all alone. Right now I have a, a niece and two nephews who are missing graduation ceremonies, grieving that loss. And when I talk to them, 
can tell they're kind of worried about what other, I can tell they're worried about what other things are going to have to give up, what other things might not happen for them that they had planned for and expected for so long. That I try to be with them and listen to them. To begin, to begin and to be not afraid, to be brave instead, to be willing to face our fears, we must first begin by our, touching our spiritual ground, whatever that is. Take a breath. A simple breath is always the bridge between yourself and the interconnectedness of everything. Full of fear and tension, but also full of wholeness and possibilities. Each of our lives, of every person in humanity, is a bridge itself, not an end. A marker of wholeness and connection and change. And then, once we have found our own grounding, we listen to those who are seeking grounding and finding their own source of comfort and hope and strength. We find that sometimes those are very different, but all of them speaking to something larger than we can ever know, something larger than we can ever name. And that is why Unitarian Universalist communities are so important. Instead of coming up with one set of language and one set of terms and stories that bind everyone together. We understand that all the stories bind us together, the wonder and the power of the stories and the underlying truth beyond all of it but brings us together and helps us cross the bridge to give us hope when hope is hard to find and a song of love and a rose in the winter time. Whether you are a young adult crossing the bridge into adulthood or a person who is crossing into elderhood or someone who is struggling with what do I do at this time of great uprising and civil justice protests. Know always that your com church community is full of people who love you truly, who know your worth and value, who endeavor always to care for you to help you bandage your wounds and then cross the bridge safely and bravely. To invoke this image of crossing bridges in life, crossing over in transitions and going through change, we're now going to listen to uh, Chris Lehman sing The Circle Game. Lyrics will be available if you want to sing along. Yeah. 
Chris's fine voice, and this awareness of the circle, great circle that rolls through life and encompasses us all. Today we have a tremendous honor, an honor to celebrate the major life milestones of our graduating seniors. We honor the fact that they have crossed a bridge from why are you, you, to emerging adults. Allison now will celebrate these young adults. Thank you for that beautiful song. It gets me every time. <laughs> okay. At our child dedication rituals, we welcome young children into the church community by giving them white roses on stems from which the thorns have been removed. The middle schoolers in the coming of age program are given a combination of the colors, white and red. And just like at the child dedication ceremony, they are without thorns. The buds are symbols of life whose mysterious unfolding we, just as they, experience petal by petal. The thornless stems are vivid images of our intent to try and make the, their paths and future as smooth as possible as their lives unfold. Now you who are graduating seniors, are at the other edge of adolescence, and it is fitting once more to use these symbols, roses, to speak of what is to come. These roses are vividly colored ones and are close to opening into full and glorious flowers. However, this time the stems are not stripped of their thorns. We, I, your parents, this community, cannot hold away the inevitable hurts and dangers of adulthood any more than we can keep these buds from opening. You yourselves must handle these roses with care for no one else can do it for you. I have two other symbols with me. Though adult life is occasionally painful, we urge you to engage in it fully. So the first symbol is a pair of gardening gloves. While we are not able to protect you, we hope through the years we have given you many tools you will need to protect yourself from life's thorns. Tools such as values and principles to which to live wisely and responsibly. Decision-making skills and the knowledge of how to think for yourselves. A heritage of the right of conscience and the need to act on what the conscience demands and the support of a loving religious community in which to test and refine the possible directions of your life. Of course, even with gardening gloves, you will still experience pain. Thus, the second symbol is bandages. When you face hard times, know always that your church community loves you 
and will endeavor always to care for you and to help bandage your wounds and heal. At this time, I would like to highlight the Bridgers so you can see them and know who we are celebrating with this ritual. Guthrie Hom. <laughs> Guthrie's there with his family. I will never forget that Guthrie is the first child I remember here at the fellowship. I was walking to my car on a sweltering day when he popped out of the bushes wearing a snowsuit and only his dirty eyes and nose peeking out. We stared at each other and I thought, what a strange child. And he's lived in my heart ever since. After graduation, Guthrie is going to college for film school to get a career in cinema, video effects, and video production. Lillian Hudson. Lillian started attending UUFSD when she was 14 years old. Besides her ability to put poetry into everything she does, you can see here in the picture, she is, has an amazing talent for avoiding photographs. <laughs> she is the one I am literally holding in the group shot. Lillian will be going to UCSD and majoring in structural engineering, specializing in civil structures. Alex Giolito. Alex came to us when he was in the first grade. This adorable photo is a few years later and he is with his brother, Nico. Despite his protestations and denials, Alex has a fierce and loving heart. He cares deeply and takes responsibility for his friend's happiness and health. Everyone would be so lucky to have a friend like him. Alex is taking a gap year and traveling, and we wish him the safest of travels. Ian Lynn. Ian started attending UUFSD with his family when he was five years old. He is a voracious and talented athlete whose tenderness is wholehearted. After graduation, Ian is going to go to Miramar and then transfer to a four year. He was going to go to Cal State Fullerton, but since they are going online, he decided to save money. Very wise. He's going to major either in business or kinesiology. Richard Masser Fry. Richard has been attending UUFSD all of his life. And then this picture you can see, he's at the microphone during a service reading what he wrote, what love looks like. After graduation, he will be attending UCSD and studying applied mathematics at Warren College. He is not quite sure what particular career he will pursue, but I'm sure it will be as brilliant as he is. Zoe Sandberg Smith. This is a picture of Zoe with her mom and brother at a Dia de los Muertos celebration at the fellowship. I love her independent and fierce spirit. She will be taking classes at Miracosta to eventually transfer to USCSD or UCSC. In her words, quote, there are a million different professions on my mind when I consider my future. That sort of just happens when you have the fortune of having access and lo loving a ton of different things. I'm using college as the time to hone in on the list and figuring out what I like. Whatever it will be, Zoe, I'm sure it will be as exciting as you are. Will a congregation please turn in your order of service to the bridging ceremony litany? It will actually be on our screen. Due to the nature of Zoom, our litany is a little different this year. When the congregation speaks, please recite at home. You will still be muted, but like the power of prayer, it will be felt. Thank you. You who are bridging today, you have grown up from children to youth and now into young adults. 
transitions from one stage to another are part of all of our lives, and this is your transition and your moment. Transitions can be scary and difficult as you step from the unknown, from the known to the unknown. You can trust and support. You can trust the support of this congregation and of the wider community. You can have faith that you are held in the embrace of a larger love as you move forward in your journey. We want you to know we love you and we're proud of you. We are so grateful for all of you, for all you have brought the youth community, and we are sad that you are leaving us. We will miss you, but we are so excited for you. Thank you for your gifts of friendship and joy, and for memories we will always cherish. As you give over to your future, go with our blessing. You have our support and friendship always. We love you, and we are proud of you. In gratitude, we join to honor your transition from youth to young adulthood. We bless you now as you take your place beside us. May you find among us allies and friends here for you, cheering you on as you continue becoming who you are. We love you and we're proud of you. We welcome, we welcome you. <laughs> we welcome your blessing. Thank you for supporting us for seeing us and believing in us, for loving us as we move through this time of transition and anticipation. We pledge to one another to be in community fully and openly with all the blessings and responsibilities such an effort brings. And to move together into the future of this, our Unitarian Universalist faith, we honor this, honor this transformative, transformative time, time in, in our lives. Our lives. All our lives we cross barriers. All our lives we go beyond the walls that others build. May we find not valleys of despair, but let us find bridges of comfort and inspiration and loving community. Please join with Candace and saying our chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Now, together, let us extinguish our flames and listen to our postlude after the postlude, you may choose to stick around for a virtual coffee hour and connection.
Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back to the virtual coffee hour. Uh, we're going to do a special virtual coffee hour this uh, this service. We are going to do uh, only two rounds of our regular um, communal meeting, and uh, which will last until about seven or excuse me, eleven twenty, not seven twenty. Um, after that, we'll break into six facilitated rooms to discuss how we're feeling um, about this present call for racial justice. Uh, and the current climate. So um, you don't have to do anything, just stick around if you'd like to participate in that, but just letting you know uh, what, uh, what we're gonna do, which is a little unusual. So I am going to mute all and then unmute all. There we go. You should now be able to unmute yourselves. And now I'm gonna create the breakout rooms. Up a little bit. Great. The breakout rooms are all open. You should have received a an invitation to join. Feel free to join on that. Um, and uh, welcome to the one of two general breakout rooms for this morning. Did you get uh, an invitation to the breakout room? Can you hear me? Hi, Poppy. Did you get a, an invitation to the breakout room? You have to unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Okay. I, you um, um, I, I think that I'm, I, I don't remember if I did, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to say hi to everybody. And then, um, I, um, um, you at home using oxygen full time. And I'm happy to say that I just got approval for, uh, someone from the um, the long term care from scalpers to come and help me, so that'll be good. And the shelters have been great; they've been giving me books and everything. So I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Okay. Um, well, there's there's only two people here in this room. Um, oh. Yeah, so um, you need to uh, accept the. There should have been a, a little message that's sent to you to to join a breakout room. Oh, you see that? Um, no, but anyway, I um, next time I'll I'll try to remember that. Okay. I can I can move you to one. Let's hear. I'll move you to breakout room one. Do you see any message there that pops up? No, but um, I don't need to this week, but okay. next, I should, um, what should I do next week? Um, it might be a little easier to, um, it seems like you're on a phone or an, um, an iPad, is that right? I'm on an iPad, yeah. Hmm. Do you have like a laptop or a computer that you can use? I, I have a desktop. Okay. Then maybe next time um, join with the desktop, and I think I think it's a it's a little easier. Zoom's a little easier to see things like the pop up menus and um, stuff like that. It gets a little complicated on the uh, on the iPad and my phone. I was trying to share, you know, when I said um, the the joys and concerns or something. I was going to try to share, but I couldn't figure out a way. So yeah, you can also send them beforehand if um, you can email them to the pastoral care committee. Okay. Um, just via email, but, okay. uh, if, if you want to contact me, feel free, if you have problems connecting and, and, you know, you can come early and, and, uh, if you're having problems, uh, and I'll, we'll do our best to, to get you. Okay. Happy week. And thank you. Absolutely. Take care. 
Polly, is that your name? Can you hear me? Okay. I'm not sure if you if you know that your camera is on. Your microphone is muted, but I'm going to turn your camera off just in case you're unaware of that. Okay? So you can um you can chat with me and send me a message if you if you would like to get back on, but I'm going to uh turn your camera off just for your own privacy. I'm going to stop your video. And there we go. Great. Okay, here we go. Put you in. Hi, Matt. You should uh, have gotten a um, an invite to join Breakout Room Two just now. There you go. <laughs> 